Hi, we're at the 2014 at Los Angeles Film Festival for Muse, and we are here with Joe Saunders, the director of Billy Mize and the Bakersfield Sound. How's everything going today? Everything's great. Everything's good, going well. Great. So how's the film uh, been playing at the film festival? What's been the reaction so far from what you've seen? Uh, it seems like everybody's really enjoying it. I mean, we sold out um, our first screening. We have our second screening tonight. Um, everybody's been, I mean... You know, there was a lot of family in Bakersfield uh, locals at the screening uh, on Saturday, and um, they loved it. So that right, was great. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit about the storyline and why was it this the time to make this film and put it out on the silver screen? Um, well, uh, the storyline is about a country musician who uh, kind of helped found a country music revolution that happened in Bakersfield, California, that went on to rival what was going on in Nashville, and this is in the 50s and 60s. And um, uh, they had more of a rock-infused beat to it, more of a dance music, uh, in contrast to Nashville's very smooth, uh, countrypolitan was the, was the term they were using. And um, the, the, the movie chronicles the history of how this Bakersfield sound kind of, kind of came out of Bakersfield, how the, the music was inspired mm -hmm. there, um, and, and the names that came out of there are Merle Haggard and Buck Owens, but Billy Mize was really a central figure in that. Mm -hmm. And he's been forgotten for several reasons, which are touched on in the documentary, mm -hmm. uh, tragedies in his life and right. personal decisions that he's made. Um, what was the second part of the question? And uh, what was... Why did you feel like you needed to make the documentary now and have it being shown to the world? Well, I wanted to do it. I mean, these guys are are very old. You know, they're, um, uh, Billy is 85 now, and you know Merle Haggard's getting up there, and Buck Owens has already passed away. And actually, a couple of the guys I've interviewed for this uh, documentary, Ray Price being one of them, and Cliff, Cliff Crawford have passed away just in the last year. So it was important to get their voices heard, I thought. And, um, and it seems that there's a lot of other people within the music industry who independently have been attracted to this music, kind of maybe just doing the research and going back to try and figure out where certain sounds came from. Mm -hmm. uh, Vince Gill just released an album uh, just a few months ago about that's titled The Bakersfield Sound, kind of, kind of a tribute album to those musicians. And the country, and the country Music Hall of Fame opened up an exhibit recently that, that's highlighting The Bakersfield Sound. And so it's kind of coming back into the, into the culture and it's, it seems like the right time to do it. Yeah, I know we had talked before about it and you could really hear in the documentary, which I wasn't really very familiar with, the whole Bakersfield country sound. It was really an education to me on what was going on and the music and the sound and what we hear today. Because I heard a lot of what you hear now in country music and in other part, different styles of music in the music that was coming out of the Bakersfield area. Uh, with Billy Mize, uh, what was that? Was it hard for you? Because I, I believe you are his grandson. How hard was it to tell his story, and do do uh, since he is your grandfather? How do you make something like that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all, it's just, it just seems very difficult to make a film about. about it family is, members. you know, I, th I think one of the one of the biggest challenges was just communicating to the audience that I'm not trying to make my grandfather, you know, mm -hmm. saintly or or trying to 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 um, create, you know, uh, something create him to, to make him look bigger than he was mm -hmm. and I, that I was very conscious of that from the very beginning I didn't want to do that I wanted to tell the truth I wanted you know and, and to, to the point on, so, on some cuts uh, I went too far in the other direction I kind of buried some of the things that um, that were significant achievements of his because I was afraid that it would you know it would expose me of trying to glorify my grandfather mm -hmm. but and it took like you know I'd been working on this for six years so over the course of that time, I got more and more comfortable with the things he's achieved and um, felt I didn't, you know, I just needed to tell the truth and tell all the truth, all sides of the truth. And it was, but, you know, this was all going on in my head because he is my grandfather. So it was, it, there was like two or three extra steps to any decision, mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to divorce myself from being familially tied to him, um, but also, you know, coming back to that decision as a director and a filmmaker. Right. So, to go off the film a little bit, uh, what what was your start in directing? Uh, we do have a lot of uh, younger viewers on our YouTube channel. Uh, what was your start? How did you get started in directing? And just go into that. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to film school at Southern Methodist University, um, and uh, well, 
that's just school, but I was, yeah. my major was uh, cinema mm -hmm. at the time. And um, after, uh, gra after I graduated, I got hired at NFL Films. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to do fiction stuff, and I still write and try and do as much fiction as I can, but I got hired at NFL Films to do documentaries on sports players, and, or football players. And um, I did that for five years, and loved them. It was a great job, right? <laughs> yeah. So, it, I mean, that's where I got my documentary background. And, they, and some of the guys, you know, the guys there are kind of, you know, they're some of the most talented people in, in sports uh, television. Maybe the most talented people, I think. Um, you know, Steve Sable, who ran that company and was my boss, is just an icon in that world. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I, I wanted to get back into fiction uh, filmmaking, so I quit and went to Columbia and studied uh, directing there. And um, this is kind of a project that I've been working on for so long and, and um, just kind of came out of all of that education and and professional experience. And uh, are we going to be, to go back to the film, uh, are we going to be seeing that documentary coming out anytime soon for the general audience to be able to see? I hope so. Cool. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm not sure. We, you know, that's something that, that me and this guy will, <laughs> will have to figure out. But, um, but yeah, I hope so. I mean, it, it'll definitely kind of be in the festival circuit for a little bit. And um, there are some people kind of asking for screeners and that kind of stuff yeah. that might, you know, um, might have some kind of a wider distribution, but I hope so. Well, I hope I hope so too because I think a lot of people, especially in California, need to see this documentary. It's a great educational source for what the music the music landscape of what California is and how much of an influence California music really has had in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to just say thank you for sitting down with us. We really appreciate it. Nation on Billy Mize and the Bakersfield Sound. Please check out SoCalMuse.com. And we'll see you soon live from 2014 Los Angeles Film Festival.